What's happening geeks and welcome to a brand new segment in my channel which I'd like to call Chris's Custom Collectibles. Now if you're wondering what I mean by custom collectibles, I'm going to be taking everyday action figures and statues that range from about $10 to $70 from say Toys R Us, Big W, Kmart, and they're going to deck them out, pimp them out to make them look like something you'd expect to pay several hundred dollars for. Now it's fair to say there are some action figures out there that you get from general toy stores these days that look damn good and have a lot of potential, but the paint job is always lacking. Now the first collectible that I'm going to be customizing in this episode is the Hulkbuster Titan series armor from Avengers Age of Ultron. Now you look at this thing right off the bat, it's huge. It has got so much potential for extra detail. The form is there, it's a perfect blank canvas. Now I've seen people on the net that have customized these and given them a whole new paint job and they look gorgeous. They've even gone so far as inserting LED lights in the eyes, the arc reactor, the legs and the backpack. So you know what, I figured bugger it, this is time for a good segment where I can take action figures just like these and deck them out and make them look damn good. Now this Hulkbuster in particular actually opens up to fit the Titan series Iron Man inside. So already you can see this is easy access for pulling apart so we can prime it and then move on to painting. Now like I said, we've got to take this thing apart first so it's in pieces, which is gonna make priming a lot more easier. As you can see on the back here, we've got all these screw holes. So taking apart this thing isn't gonna be a hassle. Okay, now once all arc reactor holes have been drilled out, it is time to prime. Now the brand of primer that we're gonna be using today is Model Masters Grey Primer. Now what you wanna remember when you're priming is go slow and steady. You don't wanna rush this because you don't wanna inhibit any detail. You don't wanna build up any areas and lose surface detail. Now when you're priming the surface, you wanna make sure the can is about 30 centimeters away and just evenly coat it nice and smoothly. Okay, now once all those pieces have been primed, you wanna let them sit for about 24 hours. Now I know after about half an hour, it's touch dry, but trust me, the last thing you want is to move on to the actual paint application and have the primer not fully cured. So for a bit of peace of mind, it's best to leave these pieces sit for about 24 hours. And of course, the next step is the actual paint application. And for that, we're gonna be doing a base red throughout the whole body because majority of the paintwork is gonna be red. We're then gonna go in and tape off certain areas that are gonna be gold and silver, whilst also doing some hand painting because there are some details that are just too hard to mask off. Now for the overall red scheme, we're gonna be using gloss red from Rust-Oleum. Now this product is fantastic because it has two times the coverage of any other spray paint so you can get a great coverage with minimal use. Now when using any spray paint, please wear gloves because you are gonna get splatter patterns all over your hands and also wear a respirator if you are not working outside. We're a couple of days into an Australian summer here, so of course I'm gonna be working outside and that is gonna speed up the drying time of this. Just like the primer, you wanna keep the can about 30 centimeters from the actual piece with nice even strokes. Okay, just like when we first primed the pieces, you wanna let them sit for about 24 hours at least because this is enamel gloss paint. It takes a very long time to dry. Even in an Australian summer, you wanna let it cure for at least 24 hours. Now, as you can see, we've got a nice, smooth, even coverage, which is what we want. Even though this is gonna be weathered and battered by the end, you still want it looking pristine. Now it's time to go in and do the detailing work. And some parts require some masking off that are gonna be spray painted and also hand painted. And for that, it's just run of the mill masking tape. You want adhesion that isn't going to be too strong or too soft. You want to meet about halfway so it's not going to tear that paint off. Now for the actual hand painting side, you want some good high quality brushes that are squared off and are sharp that are going to cover all that detail. And for the actual paint itself, we're just going to use Masters Gold and Chrome Silver.
Okay, so after a grueling 10 hours of hand painting, all pieces are finally done. Now you guys probably noticed I said it was all hand painted. Now originally I was going to mask off some areas and spray paint them, but that brings me to a very interesting next point. Now when you're tackling a project like this that includes a lot of delicate painting, it is vital that you do a test piece from say a spare casting or an unused piece you've got lying around. Now, perfect example is this Iron Man leg, which is from another figure that I eventually will be pimping out and doing another video on. This is made of the exact same plastic as the Hulkbuster. I've gone ahead and primed it with the exact same primer we used on the Hulkbuster and the exact same Rust-Oleum Red. The original plan was to then use the red back racing gold and silver, mask off certain areas and spray paint them, including the face plate. Now, what I'm about to demonstrate is why you should always do a test piece. Check it out. And see guys, there you go. As cool as that was, with all those veins appearing, that is why you should not mix two different brands of spray paints. So in the end, I had to use the Masters hand paint vials, the gold and silver. They did not clash with the Rust-Oleum whatsoever. Actually, they were amazing to use. Some areas only required two coats, others only required one. They were perfect to use. And even though it took me 10 hours, it was well worth it. Okay, once all the painting is done, it is now time to move on to the electronics side for the arc reactor lights. And for that, we're gonna be using nine LED bulbs. The way these are gonna be wired is they're gonna be linked up parallel right up to a AA battery pack. And it's as simple as that, guys. I'm gonna be soldering these pieces to the positive and negative wires. Make sure to tape each one off with electrical tape so they're not gonna to clash together and cause an issue. Now that we've done a test and everything's wired up, it's time to mount these things in the body of the actual Hulkbuster. And it's just been glued in place with a special polypropylene glue and backed up with some duct tape. And you wanna do a test just to make sure all the wires are still working. Now, as you can see, I have gone ahead and weathered this thing, and it's not something that I want to go into a lot of detail with because it's quite simple, and I'll just show you now. All you need is some black shoe polish, I just use Kiwi brand, with some tissue or some paper towel and a brush. You're just going to get that brush, dab it in the shoe polish, and dab it all over the body, coating the whole thing, grabbing that tissue or paper towel, wiping off the excess, and that is going to leave stains in the crevices and just make it really detailed, weathered, looks like old oils leaking out of it, so I'm very happy with that end result. And there we go, there's a nice shot at the back and you see that lovely texture and all that detail that the shoe polish just sinks into. And now that that's done guys, it's time to put this bad boy back together. And there you have it guys, with a few easy steps and some minor fiddling, you can make a $70 figure look like a several hundred dollar figure. So thanks very much for watching guys. If you have any questions about this guy or anything you're unsure of in the actual tutorial, please drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. As always, thanks very much for your continuing support guys. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.
All right, buddy, let's go get a drink. <laughs>